Okay, um, so this is the uh, recording of com uh, Collaborative Statistics, Chapter 12, uh, Problem 3, which is on regression. Um, now, I, when we do regression, uh, it's really just to kind of get an idea of being able to estimate um, one value based upon other values. Um, in this case, we're doing simple regression, so there's only one x value, but we could have many, many, many um, reg uh, um, dependent variables. Uh, sorry, independent variables, and then one dependent variable. That would be multiple regression. We could do um, different types, but this is all just going to be linear. All right. So in problem three, we're looking at heights for boys. Now, uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to enter our data in. So we're going to go to stat edit and we're going to enter our data. So birth is zero years old and then I have two, three, five, seven, ten, and fourteen. And then I have heights in centimeters, 50 .8, 83.8, 91.4, 106.6, 119.3, 137.1, 157.5. Okay, so all I've done is just put the data in at the, the beginning. Um, they want to know, well, which one should be uh, independent? So which of these makes sense to estimate on the other one? Obviously, um, as you get older, you should get taller. So age is the um, independent variable, and then height is dependent upon that. Then they want us to graph it. Now, so to graph this, we have to come to stat plot. So second, stat plot. And we're going to make sure we turn it on. So we're going to go to number one, enter. First thing we do is turn it on. And then we have to tell it that it is a um, scatter plot. So that's the first one. And our values are in list one and list two. And how do we want this to go? look we just keep changing things as we need to okay and now to graph it we do zoom stat okay this will fit our data to our statistics that we have so our x values and our y values so make sure that all our x's are seen and all of our y's are seen and then we look at this on our graph well, we can see it's not A here, and it's not C, because those are both going down. We have to look to see which way is it going. Is it going up? Yes, they're both going up. Now, when we look at this, we have our height as our y-axis, which is our dependent variable, and x is our age, so that's our independent variable. Here we have the height as the deep independent and age is the dependent, so that's why this one's incorrect, and this is our right answer. They're really bad at making multiple choice, by the way. So, um, does it appear that there's a relationship? Yeah, as we go x goes along, this goes up. It looks pretty straight even, um, so yes, there appears to be uh, some relationship. D. Calculate the least squares, or the line of best fit, or the regression line. These are all the same uh, format. Now, what you want to make sure you look at is how do they want this, because your calculator, when we go to stat, calc, has two regressions for linear regression. Linear regression number four is ax plus b, and linear regression number eight is a plus bx, where in the first one, this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. In the second one, this is the y-intercept and this is the slope. So they wanted an a plus bx form. So they want number eight. So make sure you choose that one. Okay. Um, and so when I hit enter, it's going to ask me where is my information. Okay. I have list one and list two. I don't have any frequencies. I'm not going to store it. I just take calculate. And that gives me my formula. So here's my A, which is my y-intercept. Okay, and here's my B, which is my slope. And they want us to round to three decimal places. 
right? The next one asks us, find R. Well, I don't have R on here, and you probably don't either. So to do that, we have to turn it on. The calculator, by default, has this tool off, all right? So I'm going to show you how to get that. Second zero brings up the catalog of all of the form, all of the file formulas that are in uh, and functions that are in your calculator. And we want to go to one called diagnostic. And these, so these are in alphabetical order. And if we type in the letter D, oops, second diagnostic. Let me try it again. Second diagnostic and the letter D. There it is. That's I. Oh well. D. There it is. So that brings us to the letter D. And we just need to scroll down to diagnostic on. We need to turn diagnostic on. And so when we hit enter, it says diagnostic on. We hit enter again, it says done doesn't look like anything has changed until we do our regression again. So if I go to stat, calc, go back down to number eight, and this is all the same, nothing's changed, I go back to calculate, it now gives me more information. It gives me my r squared and my r. My r is the coefficient that they're looking for. So that's why we need that. We need to turn diagnostic on to get r. All right, so that's the value there. The next question is, is it significant? Well, to do that, we need a table. And I've added it to Blackboard. And then I closed it, so. Ah. Blackboard, okay, it's right here. This 95% critical value, it's under chapter 12. It's also in the book All right, when we click on it. So this brings us to a table that's in our book. Right, and we have to scroll down. And then it says degrees of freedom of n minus 2. So what we have to look at is how many things do we have? We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 samples. So n minus 2 would give us 5. And we have to compare our r squared, or sorry, our r to this value here. Okay, so where's my calculator? My r was 0 0.9761, this value is 0 0.754. Now we don't care about the negative when it says positive or negative, we're just taking the absolute value of this. If this number here is bigger than this number here, the um, coefficient of correlation is significant, and therefore we can do a uh, good regression test, and we can then um, use this for estimation. So that's how we find that answer. So you're going to need that table for each one of these problems. And so if it's bigger, it's yes. If it's not bigger, it's no. Find the estimated average height for a one-year-old. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to y equals, and we're going to put in our value here, 65.088 plus 7.095, and I need x, and x is right here on this button. And when I hit enter, Okay, and then go back to the graph, it now draws the line. You're like, great, what do I do with that? Trace. And trace allows me to see the points. So this here, the, what it first gave me was my um, graph, this graph right here. Okay, it's finding those points. If I move up, it allows me to switch to my actual y equals. And what I can do is I can plug in any number I want for a one-year-old. So if I hit one, 
it will give me my value as long as it's in this range. If it's not in this range, it won't give me a value, okay, because it doesn't make sense. So here's my answer. For a 12 year old, it gives me my range. Okay, it gives me my answer. Here it is right here. Now it does it appear that the line of best fit, uh, that a line is the best way to fit. Yes. Okay. Um, because it is pretty linear. Okay. Um, we don't see any curves. Um, it's not a parabola or anything like that. So yes to that one. H. Are there any outliers? No. And you'd tell if there's an outlier because, you know, something's dropped way down low or way up high above where the line is. Um, what is the age of a 50, height of a 57 year old? Well, again, if I'm here and I type in 57, I'm going to get an error. Okay. That's because it's way outside of the range of the data that I had. Okay. I can fix that by going to window. I'm going to quit. I'm going to go to window and notice how this stops at 15. I'm going to change it to 57 year old, so 65. And I don't know how tall this person is going to be, so I'm going to make it about 1,000. And now when I go to the graph, here's my points. When I go to trace, and I go back up, and now if I type in a 57 year old, it gives me the height. All right. And this isn't reasonable because this is four meters tall, which is well over 12 feet, <laughs> four and a half meters tall, which is, you know, probably um, almost 15 feet tall, 14 feet tall. Um, but the reason it makes no sense is because it's outside of our range of data. Okay. It's outside of the information that we have here for X's. Okay. So it's not usable. And then what is the slope? Well, the slope is the one with the X. Okay. This is a X plus B, I'm sorry, a plus B X format. So this is your Y intercept. This is your slope. That's all it is. What does the slope mean? Well, as X goes up, which is years, as we go up one year, uh, because it's positive, it increases by whatever the slope is. Okay. And that's how you're going to do every one of these problems. All right. Um, they're all exactly the same. Um, I hope this was helpful and I will see you on Saturday.